Thanks, Deputy Speaker. Um, anyone with a surname uh, like mine carries a, a legacy, uh, genetic and historic. Uh, we come from a part of the world, once uh, had a name, Yugoslavia, where people of different faiths and ethnicities were as tight as brothers and sisters. They shared all the special religious and personal events and, uh, and they sung songs together about a country that was outside of an anthem, but this was a truly special bond that then in a matter of years disappeared and the most depraved acts occurred between people who had said they'd loved each other like brothers and sisters. And knowing the impact of hate in the way it uh, uh, tears apart societies, I've carried that since my 20s. I, I, there are a lot of people that have seen similar episodes in different parts of the world uh, where this is, it just comes to the fore at moments uh, like this, where hate drives people to do the most barbaric, the most barbaric of actions. That hate propelling violence uh, is something that we must all uh, not only recoil from, but we have to act against. Like many people world over, we've been aghast at what we've seen in Israel on the 7th of October. It's an absolute abomination. Hamas must be, is being, rightly condemned. The way they targeted infants, the way they targeted women, the way they targeted the elderly, uh, and they target people on the basis of their faith. And so many Jewish people lost their lives uh, in a way that uh, is completely and utterly unacceptable. And we feel deeply for them and we grieve with, with Israelis world over who are feeling this deeply. All the hostages absolutely must be released without condition. And I also acknowledge any government who is confronted with these acts in their own border, will respond. They have to respond and they have to hold Hamas to account. And that will happen. Too many Israelis and Palestinians since October 7 have paid an utterly horrific price. And I'm deeply concerned about what happens from here. And I also think deeply about what happens in Gaza where two million people are crammed in and there will be a lot of innocent Palestinians who will pay a price for the actions of Hamas. Hamas absolutely, I restate this, be held to account, Deputy Speaker. Innocent Palestinians should be protected. They should be given passage. They should be able uh, to find a way to get out of harm's way. And they should also be preserved as well in the sense that they are not targeted. I think about what we can do, what we can do about something that is so far away. But it is a simple and powerful proposition, Deputy Speaker, and that is to always be conscious of the humanity of others. I, I, I recognise, and I think any student of history recognises, there have been moments in time where the violent refusal to recognise the humanity of others has written the worst chapters of humanity. And specifically when I think of my friends in the Jewish community and the intergenerational trauma created by the Holocaust, those moments, remember what has driven that. I think of many shared meals from Shabbat to Iftar. And I think of the bonds that have been created through those moments. And I know it's very hard those warm memories will be pressured to the deepest recesses of minds created or moved out by the memories that are being created or may be made in the coming weeks. But being conscious of humanity will be an important way in which we preserve what we value most in this country. It should be at the front line of our fight against anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. It's been at the heart of work of the people like the member for Cowan who sits behind me, who I thank deeply for what she has done to take up the fight against extremism and the way it tears communities apart. Yeah. And on these points, Deputy Speaker, and I'm very grateful to have been able to express a few remarks in this very important debate we're having. Not all Israelis are Jewish, 
and not all Palestinians are Muslim, but everyone feels the dread of the moment. And regardless of your faith or ethnicity, all Israelis and Palestinians are absolutely entitled to the right to a future free from the weight of fear. And they should be able to build better lives for themselves and do what every one of us who are parents want, build a better life for the ones that follow. And they should be able to do it within the state of Israel and they should be able to do it in the state of Palestine. I thank the House. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.